We don't need another injection. What we need is to learn a little self-discipline in this country and stop eating so much. Push away from the table there, Bertha. So the secret is out and it's all over the world. People in this world and people in our country especially are obese and it's a terrible epidemic. Everywhere you go, all you see is people, for the most part, they're overweight. Drive by a children's playground and probably five out of 10 of those kids are overweight. Why? Because all of our kids do now is they sit inside and play games. It's very few kids that you actually see out playing anymore. In our generation, or a lot of your generation, you were out doing activities, you were out playing, or now you see very few kids out playing sports, and even a lot of them, that's the only physical activity they are getting through the week. This grows up into overweight adults, and it gets worse over time. I'm telling you, the eating habits in this country are terrible, and it's only going to get worse. The advent of fast food has just made this country grow fat and fatter and overweight to the point of morbid obesity. So along comes more shots, more pills, more ways to do things. And what everybody's trying to avoid is the discomfort of dieting, the discomfort of discipline. And if you do not get back to the ability to discipline your body, to discipline your appetites, you will never succeed in losing weight. Now, a lot of you are not going to like this because this hits you right where you are. But if you don't start learning to embrace the suck, if you don't start learning to embrace the ability to go without, then you are going to be a fat person the rest of your life. Nationally, 41.9% of adults are considered obese. Black adults have the highest level of adult obesity at 49.9%. Hispanic adults had an obesity rate of 45.6%. White adults had an obesity rate of 41.4%, and Asian adults had an obesity rate of 16.1%. Rural parts of the country had higher rates of obesity than did urban and suburban areas. We have more wealth in this country, and more wealth means more laziness. More laziness means we eat more. And when we eat more, we become obese. So we're incredibly overweight. So along come the pharmaceutical companies to the rescue, just like they did in COVID and every other thing that comes around, right? So along comes the pharmaceutical company and they introduce semaglutide, which is a GLP-1 receptor agonist. It is used for type two diabetes patients and it works very well because it helps to improve blood sugar. It helps in weight loss for those with type two diabetes. It helps with reducing cardiovascular risk. And it's a very convenient dosing for those who have type 2 diabetes. And instead of injecting something every day or taking a pill every day, it gives you a once a week dosing. So there is benefits for those with type 2 diabetes. But because it is able to control hunger, we raise the dosage level. And so when we do that, it allows for people to not feel full. How does it do this? It mimics GLP-1, which is a hormone that your body produces that keeps the stomach from emptying out. And so when it does this, it keeps you from feeling hunger. Now, here's my problem with it. The part of the diet that I loved was the very fact that I had that hungry feeling. Now, I'm not talking about the, the gnawing, always hungry feeling like I'm gonna pass out feeling. I'm talking about that little bit of gnawing, knowing that that with my exercise, I was burning body fat and I love seeing the results of it. People want instant gratification. That's the why, that's why we took steroids. That's why we use growth hormone. That's why we use uh, insulin because we want it all now. Trust me, I'm the poster child for it. But when it came to diet, I did not do the shortcut. And now what we're seeing is 
everyday, regular, obese people, some too big to get out of a bed, and they're using Ozempic, they're using Wegovy, they're using some form of semaglutide without understanding what it even does. So there are some problems with semaglutide, and number one is gastrointestinal side effects. Listen, common side effects of semaglutide include nausea and vomiting and diarrhea, uh, particularly at the beginning of the treatment. I know a lady who was taking it, and you only dose it every seven days, right? So she took it, and for the first four days of her week, she was sick and vomiting, diarrhea, cramps, nausea, and she had a really tough time with it. Uh, on day five, six, she would do better, and then came around to day seven where she was having to inject again. And so she was in this vicious cycle of being sick and nauseated and throwing up because of semaglutide. Now, it is known that this is a side effect of semaglutide or one of its derivative medications. So it has a lot of gastrointestinal side effects. It has hypoglycemia. Guys, if you are a bodybuilder or somebody prepping for a show, you don't wanna be using semaglutide. You don't wanna be using these drugs because like other diabetic medications, semaglutide can cause low blood sugar. And when you are dieting and you're already are limiting your carbs and your blood sugar is already low, the last thing you need is a drug inside you that is lowering even more and could send you into a hypoglycemic emergency. Now, another danger of semaglutide is pancreatitis. Uh, and there are rare reports of pancreatitis or an inflammation of the pancreas in semaglutide. The other thing is a thyroid C-cell tumors. Now, hang on a second. We haven't seen this in adult humans yet, but in studies, they have seen it in animals. And so there is a risk in humans for tumors in your thyroid. The other thing is gastrointestinal motility. I already talked to you about gastrointestinal problems, right? There are a lot of people in this country, across this world, that already have gastrointestinal motility. In other words, your stomach doesn't empty like it should. Now, you would never know this because it doesn't really bother you or you've been living with it and it's just your normal and you're not used to anything other than that. And so if you're somebody that has a lot of problems go uh, eating and then going to the bathroom at any point later in time, a day or two later, it might be because you are not emptying as fast as you should be. And so I know a lot of people have this kind of issue. But according to doctors, when you add in semaglutide, when you add that drug in, it slows everything down even more. And instead of everything clearing out of your body, like it's supposed to, it will take sometimes days and days for it to clear out. Now this is extremely important because if you are not able to clear yours, you are taking this semaglutide, then you can have some very, very serious issues in your gut. It will make you feel like that you cannot eat anymore or it make you feel like that food is backing up into your throat. There is one woman out in Canada who literally for her her birthday last year, she said she went ate four french fries and felt it coming up through her throat. And when she finally went into the bathroom, she started violently vomiting. And now a year later, even though she's off of semaglutide, she's still having the vomiting and it is really, really bad in her life to the point where she had to quit her job. And so these things are very real side effects in semaglutide and these other weight loss drugs that mimic GLP-1. And so it's so important for us to make sure we know exactly what we're taking and know exactly what the risks are. I'm telling you now, there is example after example all over the internet of people who are taking semaglutide who are having an immense amount of problems with it. Now you say, well, Jeff, there are people that are taking it and they've been taking it for years and all 
they're having is a little bit of throwing up and that type of thing. Okay, but is it another thing that you want to risk? If you're taking semaglutide or as one of its derivative medications, then you have to be careful because just last month, anesthesiologists are now saying that if you are taking that drug, they want you to stop taking it a full week before you have any sort of surgery because while you're under, they're worried that your stomach is going to vomit up into your lungs and you will get pneumonia and could even die from it. This drug really concerns me because it's being sold out of peptide companies like everything else. And so kids, people, young people that are overweight are going and buying semaglutide in its pure form as a peptide and they're taking it not knowing exactly what they should be taking. They're not under a doctor's prescription. They're not under a doctor's order. They're not even being monitored. Much like bodybuilders who take an immense amount of drugs without doctor supervision, now we have everyday kids that are going in, teenagers that are obese and they're taking semaglutide. And there are so many examples of young people now already that are having what is called gastroparesis or a paralysis of the stomach. This is not a good option, in my opinion, for anybody to be taken. So you say, Jeff, what do I do? Well, number one, start reducing your calories. Reduce your calories by 500 calories a day and then increase your cardiovascular work. Just get out and walk. If you're not walking, do something. Get something going in your life to where you are actually doing something. Start getting a win. Does that make sense? Get a win in your life. Get something going in your life to where it's positive. Start cutting back on 500 calories a day. That's all you've got to do. Start walking. Go to a gym. Join the gym. Go three days a week and then two days a week walk in your neighborhood. Do something that's going to give you a win. So many of you are caught into this failure trap where you can't feel like you're winning on anything, but anybody can cut back on your calories just by tracking what you're doing for a full week and then cut back every day 500 calories. That way, once you do that, you know exactly what you're taking in and you know exactly how many you can cut and then start getting a win by walking. Start getting a win by joining a gym. You need to be winning every day and every day, if you get to the end of the day and you had a failure, start again tomorrow because every day is a new day, man. Don't allow failure in one day to affect your next day or the next day. Look, if you mess up one day, start again the next day. Go again, keep going until you have a multitude of wins lined up and you find yourself really getting to where you wanna be physically. Then don't just focus all on the outside, focus on the inside. Who are you on the inside? Why am I having a problem eating like this? What am I lacking emotionally that I am trying to feed by feeding my mouth? You see, food is a poor replacement for a heart problem, and you need to find out what's going on in your life. For me, when I found out what was going on in my life in 2019, why I was turning to drugs and bodybuilding and all that stuff, when I found God in 2019, man, all that stuff changed. I'm not hooked on all that stuff anymore, but you have got to find out what's going on on the inside. So it's not just the outside, it's also a heart condition. Find out where you are, maybe get some counseling. Go to a counselor, find out what's happening. Get some help if you need it, but get yourself a win, okay? You say, Jeff, what can I do today, right now, that gets me a win that I can build upon? I want you to reach out to one person in your life and you tell them, hey, I want you to be my accountability partner. I want you to help me because I am too weak to help myself sometimes. I need you to help me and I want you to, to help me be accountable as to how many calories I'm eating during the day and how much I'm walking. Would you please come and walk with me? Guys, find somebody that'll work out with you. Find somebody that will walk with you. Find somebody that will hold you accountable because if you are left to yourself, you will always, 
always take the easy road. We are social creatures and we need other people. It's the way we were designed. God wired you that way. So you want to win? Here's your win right now. Make your decision what you're going to do. Call somebody to help you keep accountable and then follow through. It's that simple. Because not only do you need help, somebody else needs it too.